previously on Trains Are Awesome. We took Amtrak's Pier Marquette from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Chicago, and after a few hours in the Windy City, we got aboard Amtrak Southwest Chief 3 for a 50-hour journey across the United States to Los Angeles. Now, in the last installment, we crossed over the Midwest and the Mississippi River before night fell in Kansas City, Missouri. Today, we wake up on the western end of Kansas. If you love train travel, hit that subscribe button. We upload at least once a week, and this way you won't miss any of our content. You can also join our community on Patreon. Your support gives you access to cool features such as early video releases. And finally, follow us on our social media, Instagram and TikTok. The cafe is located on the bottom floor of the observation car and currently for coach passengers this is your only opportunity to buy food aboard the train. This flat landscape might have you wondering, is this really Colorado? I thought Colorado was mountainous. It might surprise you to find out that we are actually pretty high up in altitude, almost at our highest points. And there's still interesting sights along the way, such as this prison or a dam. suite of a five-star hotel but they're the comfiest train seats I've ever been on and I was fortunate enough not to have a neighbor last night um, most of the night I actually did just sleep in my one seat but occasionally I would shift to this position and Amtrak trains have both this footrest and also like a leg rest under the seat but being six foot, it was just slightly more comfortable for me to put both of those away and just stretch out under the seat in front of me. Today I'm wearing socks with dabbing avocados on them. Aren't they cool? Now I'm gonna go change the rest of my clothes in the bathroom downstairs. Please give away. You can have to wear your mask at all times when on board the train. It is currently federal law. We have to uphold the policy. It is means for removal if you do not cooperate when you bought the ticket. Anyways, we're about to reach La Junta, Colorado, where I have a half hour to get off the train. La Junta, Colorado. It is not as warm as the other places I've gotten off. And the air smells very different too. I took my backpack with me just so no one, you know, gets on the train and takes it. All right, so let's walk the length of the train. We have the baggage car here. Oh, 
Over here we have one of two coach superliners and that's my superliner. Then over here is the observation car. You can tell because it has the larger windows. And so down here is the cafe. This is the restaurant car. And the kitchen is down here. Guests dine up there. And then one of two sleeper cars. And then we're coming up on our P-42s. Look how high the engineer has to climb to get up there. Especially compared to European trains, that's insane. Wow, those P-42s are such beasts. Um, and the exciting news is, as cool as they are, we're getting brand new charger locomotives on Amtrak long distance routes in not too much time. So, when those come out, I definitely want to do this again. I just definitely want to do this again in general. This has been such a good experience up until now. And amazingly, we've been completely on time so far. Speaking of time, I got about 20 minutes before I want to get back on the train. So I'm going to explore a tiny little bit of La Junta. It's kind of crazy to think I'm just walking in Colorado right now. This is the town of La Junta. A tiny little fire hydrant. So we cross the street and we see a Santa Fe caboose. Look how wide open and empty it feels here. That over there is a donut shop that the um, food specialist in the dining car actually recommended over the PA system. They must be thankful for Amtrak. I know it's a Saturday, but this town is sleepy. some beautiful buildings and you don't even have to walk that far away from the station. Looks like there's stray dogs here. Oh, 
By now we're over a mile up. Now that we've left Trinidad, we're going to cross the border into New Mexico and we're doing that over the Rattan Pass, which is the highest elevation on this route. So I'm going to go back to the observation car. Entering the Raton Tunnel. The tunnel itself is entirely in the state of New Mexico. Just prior to entering, there is a state line marker on the bottom right hand side of the train. If you're able to spot it, that lets you know when we leave Colorado and enter New Mexico. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the view. So once again, folks, got fingers once again open and serving. This right here, being in the observation car while we're going through the mountains, one of the best experiences in my lifetime so far. Well, maybe second best. Right now we're at the highest point of the Raton Pass. The climb up to the Raton Tunnel was in Colorado, but by now we're in New Mexico, the state that we'll stay in for most of the rest of the day.
Raton, New Mexico. This is actually the only stop on the entire line that I have been to before. I think it was three years ago we were here and we saw the eastbound South Chief. Here's some footage of that. Raton is also the site of a major Boy Scout camp, and so a lot of Boy Scouts get off the train here. As Boy Scouts from Kansas City leave, Boy Scouts heading to Los Angeles get on. New Mexico is the fifth largest state in terms of surface area in the United States, and much of the eastern part of the state is quite green. Time to buy some lunch. So I got an Angus cheeseburger, which is microwaved, Doritos. And it's in this really cool box. I wish this was a real train. Where am I? That's how consumed we are with stuff. We're coming up on Las Vegas, New Mexico, and you did not win the jackpot if you guessed that I was arriving in Casino City. That's Las Vegas, Nevada. Confusing? I know. This country has 36 Springfields. They just announced that there should be a herd of buffalo outside. I want to see those. That is a buffalo with the body of a horse and the head of a horse. Oh, and a donkey. You gotta love Buffalo. Notice how the soil is getting more and more red.
The bright red rocky landscapes and the very few signs of human civilization make this such a unique area to go through by train. Or to build a giant super mansion. It's the top of the truck. Tr yeah. You got those things all over the place. Similar to many of the other stops along the Southwest Chiefs route, Lamy New Mexico Station has an exhibit where old trains are put on display. Am I right? The speed between different segments is so vastly different. Up until Laney, we were crawling through this narrowly cut section in the mountains. Now we're in a flatter area and we're reaching close to our maximum speed of 90 miles an hour. If they still picking up a lot of dust, is there a flood? It's taxi. So they weren't going to do the rescue, they were just backup communication. Right. They had nothing to do with rescue. The rest of us, there were 192 of us. And then, still quite some distance away from Albuquerque, we just came across this almost European-looking residential area in the middle of the vast open American wilderness. And a few minutes later, Southwest Chief 4, bound for Chicago, passed us. This train was a little bit delayed and reached Chicago the next day, same day we reached Los Angeles. There was no way to get there without a plane, right? The plane destroyed. No, no, we had several planes. Oh, you had other? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is one plane that had... Towards the late afternoon, we arrived at Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, because the data coverage here was going to be decent, I decided to do our first ever Trains Are Awesome live stream while on the train and at the station at Albuquerque which is where we saw them refuel our P-42 engines, which was a really cool thing to see. So I am in Albuquerque, the largest city of New Mexico. This is my first time here. Um, anybody from my generation should associate Albuquerque with High School Musical. If you don't, I'm sorry for your childhood. Uh, we have 45 minutes here. I just showed you, but they are refueling the engine. And, uh, restocking supplies and that gives us time to look around like look over there there are people selling their things on the platform i wonder what they're selling looks like jewelry and such i'm gonna head over to the main station and show you guys around so what you're gonna do when you leave the platform is go down this ramp which I will do once this little baggage cart is gone. Little baggage, oh no, that's not a baggage cart. That's a people cart. So yeah, you're gonna walk down this ramp. And then if you walk up this ramp, there's the Rail Runner station. Rail Runner is the commuter rail here in New Mexico. Uh, they run north to Santa Fe. And I don't know if they're running today. Probably not. Oh, there might not be one running right now, but there's one. Wow. 
The Rail Runners actually have one of my favorite livery designs of any trains here in America. The train station in Albuquerque is actually called the Alvarado Transit Center, or ATC. And apart from Amtrak and commuter rail, it also serves as a hub for buses. Hmm, that hot dog stand behind me might be dinner. With over 560,000 people, Albuquerque is the largest city in New Mexico, although the capital city is Santa Fe, not too far away. There have been indigenous people's settlements here for centuries, but its modern day history started when the Spanish started a settlement here, which became Mexico, and finally in 1846 became a part of the United States of America. So this is Albuquerque. It's funny, I don't know what I expect out of this town, but maybe just not this quiet. La Junta, I understand why it was quiet, but Albuquerque, I've always pictured that as a big city. I like this downtown is definitely big. It's, it's not Chicago big, obviously, but it's bigger than Grand Rapids. There's just barely anyone out. Maybe they do siesta here. I got my hot dog from that stand behind me. The stand is a little bit unhygienic, but the hot dog looks good and the guy running it was super nice. And it was so much cheaper than on Amtrak. I'm about to head back on the train. One thing I do have to say that just popped in my mind is that whereas yesterday we passed, I swear, dozens of freight trains, we haven't passed a single one today. So allow me to explain why that is. For most of our journey today, from Colorado all the way to Albuquerque, BNSF actually doesn't operate any freight trains. They maintain the tracks just for the sole purpose of the Southwest Chief. Now there have been talks in the past to truncate the Southwest Chief and to stop services in Kansas and then in New Mexico and have people bus in the middle. I think those plans are mostly scrapped and I'm very thankful for that. Now we're heading back onto freight train territory and we're about to find out the hard way. So if you just were here in Albuquerque, folks, please wait until the conductor has cleared your ticket before you make your way down to the cafe. Just reopen, I'm not gonna close any time. So I got both the cafe is looking at open and serving. Keep your mouth down your esophagus into your stomach, your face mask we had a little bit less than an hour in albuquerque and some people still managed to not get back in time so the conductors had to pack their stuff and put it in the baggage area for them to pick up in la now we're waiting to let several freight trains pass i feel like we're gonna be out here for quite a while so that's the desert I saw a lizard in there a few minutes ago. Those are freight trains. Call this a comfort pack. Let's see what's in here. Looks like it comes with a blanket, earplugs, eye mask, and I think this is an inflatable pillow. I'm pretty sure we were supposed to have some daylight into Arizona, but now I doubt we'll make gallop before sunset. And now our good buddy BNSF seems to be pulling out in front of us. 
at least the mood in this observation car is fairly positive. I don't know about the coach car, so I'm kind of afraid to check. He's watching us. He just sent you a sign. <laughs> Only a few minutes after we had started moving again, we passed the freight train that BNSF had led in front of us. I wonder where the logic in that is. The sun was beginning to set over the New Mexico desert, and it would probably be dark before we crossed the state line into Arizona. So I'm trying to absorb some of the last views of the day. So my second day aboard the Southwest Chief was just as adventurous as the first. I got to explore two new cities and see amazing views. Plus, I'm still comfortable in my train seat and I love talking to all the people in the observation car. People have such interesting stories. Join us next time as we wake up in Arizona, right before the border with California. We'll cross over the Mojave Desert and our trip will end in Los Angeles, California. See you next time, and don't forget to subscribe to Trains Are Awesome.